Paul Metal Matt, and welcome to CC Rock, your direct line to the world of hard rock and heavy metal in the Bay Area. Tonight, we're at the San Joaquin County Fair in Stockton, California. In just a little while, Kansas is going to hit the stage. So sit back and relax, because Kansas, they emerged in the early 70s with such hits as Dust in the Wind, Carry On Wayward Son, and lots of other good stuff. So sit back, relax, it's going to be a good show, and check out my t-shirt, 95 Rock. That's right, KSGO, watch out. Too bad they don't come in all of Contra Costa County, because I listen to them always in East County, some good stuff. KSGO's got a little bit too whiskey in the jar, if you ask me. So, check out 95 Rock when you're in East County. We'll be right back. Welcome to CC Rock and Toto. Is this Kansas? No, this is Kansas. These guys are from Kansas. What are you guys doing tonight? We're doing fine. How about you? I'm doing good. This is a beautiful night. We're out in Stockton. You know, we don't get out in Stockton too much from the Bay Area, but I'm going to say it, it reminds me if I haven't been to Kansas. Does this remind you guys a little bit of Kansas? I mean, you guys are from Kansas. Uh, not too much. It's too hilly. Yeah. There's too many hills. Too many hills. Kansas is flatter, it's totally flat. Well, um, Phil, you, you've been drumming for the band for, you know, how many years? I mean, this has been a long time. This is, it's our, uh, this is our 25th year. Are you doing anything special as far as an anniversary, or is it just like just go out there and have fun? Well, we're going out there and having fun. Uh, we're just happy to be here after 25 years, and uh, we're just doing our 25th anniversary tour. So that's kind of what we're doing to commemorate the 25th year. We might have a cake or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like cake. <laughs> yeah, they're a good band. <laughs> well, now the, the, I mean, the, the big thing about right now is you did this new album, Always Never the Same. Now you taped it over at Abbey Road Studios with the London Symphony, and you know you play a number, Eleanor Rigby. Tonight I heard it; it was hot. I mean, where's the inspiration for this album? I mean, where'd you come up with it? Uh, just wanted to always do something with a symphony. Um, the Moody Blues and ELP and Deep Purple, a lot of bands have done things with, uh, with symphonies, but uh, not too many American bands, so it was something we wanted to do. Our music kind of fits uh, to an orchestral arrangements, and so we decided to do it, go over to Abbey Road and do it with the London Symphony, and uh, it was a lot of fun, very difficult to do. It was very hard to do, much harder than we thought it would be. And then uh, last year we did about 20 to 25 symphony dates where we actually played it with symphonies, so... Uh, it was just a challenge we wanted to undertake, so we did.
Steinhardt. He's back with the band, original violinist. I mean, did he come back, or did you ask him back, or how did the story go? He, he begged us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, paid us? Yeah, he paid us a lot of money, and uh, we whipped him. And No, it was one of those things that we had a violinist, David Ragsdale, and uh, we'd always been in touch with Robbie over the years. He came to see us play, so we'd uh, kind of retain the relationship there. And, and uh, David Ragsdale, our previous violinist, decided to pursue a solo career. So went down and saw Rob and heard him sing and saw him play and he did great. So we, we asked him back and he said, sure, let's do it. So it was about three years ago that we did that. Well, it almost seems like a full circle because he's up in the forefront. You know, it's almost like, that, isn't that the way it was when it first started off? He was in the forefront. He was up there. He's, he was always, a, uh, did it before. He's a very natural front man. <laughs> just shave me while I'm doing it. And uh, it, was, it just was a logical place yeah. to put him. Ragsdale, it really wasn't. You know, he was a, a new guy, and he wasn't really all that talkative. Robbie will talk your leg off, so. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the amazing thing about him is, oh, hey, this is kind of cool. He doesn't age. He looks the same as he did <laughs> 15 yeah. years ago almost. I mean, I was looking at some pictures that Greg had, and it was amazing how he looks almost exactly the same. I, I saw a picture of him when he was like 10, and he looked like Moses then. <laughs> 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 From the mountains to the sun Life has only just begun We went this land and pledged our souls to meet its end Life has only just begun Here my people roam the earth In the kingdom of our birth Where the dust of all Yeah. 
Livgren. He was in the band long, long time ago. He was on the box set. Yeah. And where is he today? Carrie's a farmer, has a farm in Kansas, and is retired there, and uh, makes an occasional solo album, uh, has a family, and, and runs a farm. Mm -hmm. um, well, that leads me to kind of a different question in the middle of your time period. Um, Steve left the band. He thought, I don't know, I heard rumors that he thought it was too commercial, I don't know what. I mean, he left the band for a while. John Elefante came in. He sang for a few albums. What was that like? I mean, was it, was it a big transition for you guys, or what was, what was going on? Well, yeah, it was, you know, Steve left for, you know, his reasons. Uh, uh, we had a contract that we wanted to fulfill. Um, we wanted to keep on going just because Steve left didn't mean that we wanted to quit doing it. So we, we searched for another singer and got John. He was a very talented kid. And uh, we did a few albums with him. And then after that left, you know, there's... This, we, we got 25 years here, so all these changes that, when you talk about them, seem quick, but they're pretty slow in the process, mm -hmm. as we've added, and people have come and gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, come and gone, that's a big question. I, we saw Deep Purple last summer. Steve Morris was, I'll tell you, I, I like Richie Blackmore a lot, but when I saw Steve Morris on stage, I really was, I was blown away. And I know you guys had a few good years with Steve Morris. What was it, was it, was it fun being with Steve Morris, or as, as a dual guitarist thing, or was it more of a friction? Oh no! It was great. He's uh, he's such a great guy, uh, very humble. Uh, he, I've never seen him like look down on anybody or their ability. And I've, I've seen him in clubs, like when there's really some really hackers playing, and he'll kind of he might pick something up from him. He's very observant, and I, I I learned a lot from him. But as we started playing, I started learning that there's things I did that he couldn't do, and we and I, I learned a lot from him. But he learned a little from me too, and we our styles are really different enough, much more different, so that uh, we complimented each other. At first it was terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It was like yeah, he was just inducted for the final time into the best guitar player that ever lived <laughs> Hall of Fame, yeah, yeah. and then we go into rehearsals. So it was, yeah, that, at first it was intimidating, but he made it very comfortable right away. Yeah, I, I remember backstage when he was back there, he was very down to earth, I mean, very humble, like you said, and he was just a normal person, it almost seemed like, and it was kind of odd. Did he mention us at all? Did he ever mention us? You know, he's not, he doesn't talk a lot, I'll tell you that. I mean, Roger Glover grabbed the mic for a long time, but, uh, he's you know. Of us. I know he's ashamed <laughs> of us. So. Well, I mean, that album, Power, that was a great album. I, I loved it. I think that was one of the, that was actually almost, not say the first album I heard, but it was kind of the resurgence of me getting back into you guys. And I think it was very uh, uplifting to hear an album that powerful after all those, you know, not all those years, but a few years in between there. John Alfonte was nice, but I think that the natural chemistry came back when Steve and.
you guys have some amazing music. I mean, some of your roots. Some people say it's Genesis. Some people say it's Yes. You know, I think it's I think it's your own your own thing. I mean, you guys is there a lot of you know thinking about their music that influenced you guys, or is it your own stuff? Well, I mean, we we admired those bands. We never tried to uh, emulate them. They're handsome. Um, <laughs> John Anderson. <laughs> the we yeah, but we grew up with you know, growing up in the Midwest, we were influenced by really every direction you can imagine, and so we really kind of took it all in. Uh, we, you know, we, we were a bar band, but we were the worst bar band in the world as far as a copy band because we just, I mean, we were, I don't, it wasn't really laziness, it was just bullheadedness. We wouldn't learn it, mm -hmm. the songs, the way yeah. they're supposed to be. You know, right. that's not how he sings that, and that's the wrong guitar part. We always played it the way we wanted to. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that really evolved into us. Freak of Nature album, 1995, you had a quote in there to your fans that says about not giving up. I mean, this show, we go through, you know, a lot of rock bands, <laughs> they're not always the funnest people to work with. You guys, the last day with Marshall Tucker and Molly Hatchett and Charlie Daniels make things fun. This show could actually go on, but there are times when we feel like giving up, but there's some of these other bands out there. Was that something, the message to hope that, you know, the fans keep the spirit up and what they're ever doing in life? Or what's your interpretation of Never Give Up? Well, uh, that the quote on that album was basically written concerning just Freaks of Nature, which is, uh, in the music business, uh, if you have a very dedicated work ethic nowadays, it, you're considered somewhat of a freak. Mm -hmm. The fact that, uh, I mean, people are really amazed that we would play in a band for 25 years. That seems, but if someone met a plumber, you wouldn't go, God, you've been a plumber for 25 years? You've been teaching school? For 25 years, you've been a pilot for 25 years, but if you're a musician or in a band, that seems uh, an oddity or a freak of nature, you know. So that particular quote just pertained to people that are out there slugging it out day in and day out, and uh, and that you know that don't give up. And that's you know that's how we kind of look at it. it. It's it's hard to be in a band. It's very hard. It's a, it's a marriage of five people, and it's insanity. So, uh, but we do have fun. We try to keep it fun anyway, and unless we have to do interviews like this. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that's funny because we were we were actually going to do a show with Night Ranger, and I hate to say this guy's Night Ranger, but they didn't they don't they don't want to do interviews. They're like they're tired of them. I mean, do you guys ever get? I mean, it must be time when you guys get tired of the press and things like this going on. Well, but I you know, know those guys. They're, just, they're they don't like you, <laughs> <laughs> Brad. You. <laughs> they don't care for you. I'm sorry. I, I mean, taking the time to do interviews is not, I don't really mind at all. You know, meeting people, talking with them. It's just. After 25 years, I don't find us that fascinating.
Just a drop of water in an endless sea All we do Crumbles to the ground though we refuse to see These guys treated me right here in Stockton for this candy show. We got all the grub we want. I went down tomatoes. I had a snapple. Didn't find any beer, but that's good. That's good. If I don't want to drink any beer, I'm doing CC Rock. So um, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy all this food and hang out. And maybe the guys from Candles will come back and say hi to me. So let's see what I want. Yeah. What are you guys doing in there? Um, just enjoying a little food and saying goodbye to my fans. I got this laminate pass though, right here. See? Right, you gotta get out. Okay. Show well, it over. I was enjoying my time here in Stockton, but I can see it's coming very quickly to the end. And you ever see us out in the field out there shooting the show? Come up and say hi. I've had lots of people, especially at Cheap Trick and some other shows, come up and say, hey, saw you at the show. Good stuff. Keep it up. So, anyhow, if you see me out in the field, come up and say hi because I need that drive and that force from you guys to keep it going. So, we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, okay, I'm leaving. Cry.